On June 26, 2014, the Supreme Court of the United States handed down its decision in National Labor Relations Board versus Noel Canning. This case started as a routine uh, run-of-the-mill labor dispute before the Federal Labor Agency, but by the time it got to the Supreme Court, it had raised a fundamental question never before addressed by the court about the meaning of the so-called Recess Appointments Clause of Article II. Normally, to um, appoint a member of the NLRB, the President must seek the advice and consent of the Senate, must seek Senate confirmation. But the Recess Appointment Clause gives the President the power to, quote, fill vacancies that may happen during the, rec during the recess of the Senate. Such recess appointments last until the end of the next session of the Senate. In this case, three of the five members of the NLRB who um, adjudicated uh, the case administratively had been appointed under the re recess appointments clause. And when the employer lost that case in the agency, it went to court arguing that the, that the three members of the board had not been properly uh, appointed under the recess appointments clause. Therefore, there was no quorum legitimate quorum and uh, ask the court to um, strike down or not to enforce the board's ruling. Uh, the, first court to, the first court to hear the case was the United States Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit and it sided with Noel Canning, with the employer. The D.C. Circuit based its uh, opinion on two grounds. First, the D.C. Circuit held that the recess in the recess appointments clause referred only to breaks between the two formal sessions of Congress and not to the shorter interest session breaks at issue here. Second, the D.C. Circuit reasoned that the vacancy must arise during such a break and not simply uh, continue to exist during a recess. The government appealed the D.C. Circuit's case to the Supreme Court and the court affirmed the judgment of the D.C. Circuit but on different grounds. The majority opinion was written by uh, Justice Breyer joined by Justices Kennedy, Ginsburg, Sotomayor, and Kagan. First, the majority reasoned that um, the recess um, could apply both to intercessions, uh, intercession breaks and to intra-session breaks as long as the intra-session breaks were of, quote, substantial length. And the court reasoned that anything less than 10 days would be presumptively too short to trigger the potential applicability of the clause. Second, the majority reasoned that uh, the phrase vacancies that may happen, while it seemed to apply um, only to those occurring during the, the recess, uh, again, was sufficiently ambiguous that um, it, would, uh, it would apply also to vacancies that predated the recess but continued during the recess. However, the government still lost the case because the, the court reasoned that the Senate is in session when it says it is, as long as it has the capacity to conduct senatorial business. So here, even though the Senate, at the time these recess appointments were made, at the time these appointments were made, uh, even though the Senate was meeting every three days in so-called pro forma sessions and conducting little or no legislative business, it had the capacity to do so through the use of a technique known as unanimous consent. The court also reasoned that um, each of these pro forma sessions, uh, uh, twice a week, interrupted the longer Senate recess that would have been necessary to trigger the recess appointments clause. And the three day break between the pro forma sessions in this case were, were too short to trigger the applicability of the clause. Concurring in the judgment, Justice Scalia wrote an opinion joined by Chief Justice Roberts, Justice Thomas, and Justice Alito. Justice Scalia's opinion uh, fundamentally agreed with the reasoning of the D.C. Circuit. He would have held that only intercession breaks and not intra-session breaks triggered the potential applicability of the clause, and he also would have reasoned that a vacancy must occur during such a recess and not simply continue into the recess.